So I'm gonna talk to you a little bit about what we do. What is social network? So by that, I mean open an account. Just Google Zoom, Z-O-O-M, video webinar. You can open an account with them, a free account, but then you can uh, have a paid account to do the stuff we do. So that's an actual paid account. So that's what social uh, networking as well is. So open an account, YouTube. We're all familiar with YouTube. Open a YouTube account. Again, Google it. How to open YouTube, and I'll take you through some steps here. Before that, online etiquette. What do I mean by that? And I'm the biggest sinner. I'm the biggest culprit. So I have to talk about online etiquette. There's a certain etiquette online. So it's difficult sometimes. You might not mean what you write to be hurtful, but some people might find that hurtful. So you have to be careful, extra careful with your language your uh, internet language, let's call it for now. I don't know, an example, um, someone on Facebook, you know, I do Facebook a lot. <clears throat> you put a comment about an article, someone posts, any article. Just be careful, the more words you use, the better. You know, don't be so short. I tend to be short. Uh, most people might get it, but some might not. So try and uh, explain yourself more. Think before you post or comment anything. So take a day. If someone writes a comment uh, about something you write or a personal attack or a criticism, right? Who, who likes criticisms? No one. <laughs> so wait, wait a while, wait a couple of hours. Uh, a lot of stuff I read, we read through the comments we get, you know, very nasty sometimes. So just relax. <laughs> Take a deep breath, think about it, talk to your wife or your husband. So think, think about your online tone, as I was saying. Watch out for fakes or trolls. A person who follows you religiously, that's a troll. That's known as a troll in internet land. They, they religiously, they're there. Like you post something and a second later, this person says something and then you post something else, the same person. So that's a consider a troll. They're always critical of you. They're always, you know, I mean, it's nice people follow you, but if they're all only following you to criticize you, that's different. That's a troll. Uh, do's and don'ts. So uh, status update, like I said, just share. That's what I mean by status update. Just keep it up. Keep your account going. Don't be dissuaded by haters out there. I call them did you knows. Did you know this about the word of worship? Did you know this about the word prayer and so on? I call them did you know? Quotes of the day. I love quotes online. I don't know about you, like little inspirational quotes. But I use a lot of scholars, you know, quotes I read. I mean, I'm, I'm reading all the time. Conversation starters put out an idea out there. You know, like, like a did you know? That's a, a way to get conversation started. Sharing videos and audios. Podcast is an audio. So do that as well. So by that I mean links, right? You watch something on YouTube, if, if you know how to copy and paste the link or just share that video to your social media account. If you post something on Facebook, there's an option there where you can, it says tag. And when you click it, you can add people on your friends list. So when you tag them, it's called tag, you know, like tag your it. When you post it, they'll get an, a direct message to their account about that message. But you have to be careful because a lot of people, a lot of us don't like to tag, mm -hmm. right? Especially if it's something that they obviously don't agree with. But you usually tag people who you know, oh, they're got such and such person is gonna love this. So you tag them so they can see it quicker. But be careful with tagging. Socializing. Uh, groups, so whatever social network you're using, uh, again, Facebook, I'm really focusing on Facebook here. Uh, let's see, like-minded groups, there are all kinds, right, of groups out there. Uh, pick one or create your own group. Uh, there's an option for that too. Create your own events, there's an event page on Facebook. And remember to socialize, that's what the whole point of missions is right to get out to get 
your yourself out there, get yourself known. And again, PS online tone. <laughs> I keep reminding myself. Now I'm gonna go into the multimedia. I manage a YouTube channel called Abrahamic Movement. So this is our channel, it's called youtube.com forward slash Abrahamic Movement. And you can see the views there. So this account has been open since, you see that joined April 21, 2010. So that's going on nine years. We have uh, a million six hundred plus thousand views and so on. So you can see this on any channel and you can contact as well, uh, contact us directly. Now playlists are basically, once you get a certain amount of videos, we have thousands by now, I think, videos. So then you group them, you create a, a playlist, like a music playlist. Uh, God knows uh, what your time and, and means and what you're capable of. We all have different gifts as well, obviously, so we're not all going to do this, but if you're interested, it's just the, the seed planted in, in your brain set. Sharon Gill, I don't know if, if you know Sharon Gill, and a couple of years ago, she said, you know, I'm going to create a website. She started reading, researching, and her website, 21stcr.org, uh, again, this is a lady who uh, taught herself website, and now she's what we call a webmaster. And she did this, look at this. This is an updated website, and look, look at this. I mean, I can't do this stuff. And I've been doing this for a while. So <clears throat> this is a very great gift she has. So that's uh, the Gills Ministry, 21stcr.org. Open a YouTube account is the first thing, obviously. So basically, what do you want people to see? Usually, you have to write a script. So what's a script? Basically a paragraph or so of an idea. So I want people to know about this idea and you know write yourself a little couple of lines could be a paragraph could be more uh, if you're a writer i'm not a writer but uh, many people have the writing gift skill they can just write 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 it has a main idea a thesis a catchy popular title for your video uh, talking points in your video biblical verses obviously uh, in other words i tend to do this i use a lot of quotes as i told you from scholars, but you know, that it's about the Bible, it's not about the scholars. So uh, use the Bible. This is the PowerPoint, right? So these are talking points. By the way, if you don't know what a talking point is, you see the points, that's a talking point. So the talking point is a main idea thesis. It's pretty simple, a talking point of a talking point, <laughs> and so on. Uh, try to not have word clutters. So keep it lean and mean, like Jesus is not God, here's why, something like that. Or people worship Jesus because, and so on. The production of a video, very involved, very taxing, a lot of time. Again, I'm, I have a great luxury right now to be able to do this, but it involves style. The style colors are very important in your presentations. The backgrounds, like here, the, uh, usually when you're doing this sort of thing in a big uh, room, so you want a dark background and obviously white fonts or, or bright yellow maybe fonts. Memes, uh, you know what a meme is? It's basically images and words. That's a meme. The video, the audio, editing, cut and paste, chronology, length. Now the length of the video is important because few of us just sit there for half an hour, let alone an hour. So make it punchy, right? Catchy. So three to 10 minutes, probably five minutes is perfect. So if you can get an idea out there, that's five minutes. Advertise your video on Facebook, Twitter. Again, you can open a Twitter account. We don't use it much, but uh, it's, it's available. Creator Academy on YouTube. That'll pretty much give you a full tutorial of everything I just said. How to open an account, how to produce, uh, start a channel. Again, just Google it. YouTube start a channel. 
once we do all this, right, and we get that message out there, we get feedback. So we get comments, we get emails. Igor, you just saw, one day emailed us, you know, either through the YouTube channel, remember I said there's a YouTube feedback there, or the many other ways to do it on a YouTube video, there's comment section and, and so on. People might just, usually they email Anthony, Anthony Buzzard's email is out there everywhere, I put it out there, and we said, oh great, uh, I talked to him through email first, and then I Zoomed, right? That's why it's important to have Zoom or Skype. I, I prefer Zoom, it's much better. And then I talked to Igor, and Igor said, oh, I saw your video on this, or a couple of years ago I saw this, or I've been thinking about that, and you know, it really struck my heart, and I heard Anthony say this, or, and so and so. Focus on the Kingdom magazine that goes out worldwide. Every month we publish a magazine called Focus on the Kingdom. Some of you probably get it. That goes out every month. 2,000 of, of those go out. We get a lot of feedback through that. <clears throat> You'll see it in the comments on the magazine at the end. There's, we always publish the comments. We, we just had dinner with one uh, family that, that has been very, very good to the ministry, uh, Restoration Fellowship. And this gentleman got emotional right there, you know, in, in, in the dinner table and said, you know, when, when I, the first thing when I get the magazine, it, he gets a hard copy. Yeah. Some people don't like to read it online. That's why we uh, mail it. And this gentleman says, the first thing I do when I get the focus is go to the comments at the end. Not that he doesn't read the articles, but he says, and read the comments. And he says, and I pray over them. And I, you know, and I thank God for them and so on. So that was beautiful. I mean, he got all, we all got emotional. So that, that, that's how the feedback works. So people can do that. Uh, sorry, Google. YouTube captioning, translations, and so Igor has been, as he said, I don't know if you picked up on that, but he translates his own videos, which I wish a lot of the people I work with do that, but obviously it's a gift, so there's a way of doing that on your videos where you give them access to put uh, their subtitles, in this case, uh, Croatian, so that's great. And he's gotten a lot of contacts again. Then people come to Igor, because Igor, as I was telling some of you, has not been shy. And he says, put my email out there with the video. And guess what? They flood in the emails, good and bad. But, uh, and he's gotten some new families to congregate with him in uh, Split. Again, Google thumbnails, YouTube, this is very important. It's funny, it's a little thing, but it's important. Each video, right? That's called a thumbnail. So I have learned this only really relatively recently. When you produce a video and it's ready, there is a way to create your own thumbnail or use an existing image as a thumbnail. And what for? To attract the eye. So when people are looking at millions of videos on YouTube and they see a catchy title and a catchy thumbnail, they might click on that. And that's what you need. You want clicks. Sharing educational learning videos. Again, you can Google. You can just Google that, those words I'm, I have up there. Once you become a YouTuber, as it's called, you can verify an account which gives you a the ability to upload longer videos. So we're able to every Sunday upload or broadcast uh, Anthony sermons, which I record and I upload. Uh, more on outreach. So this is now in the battleground. So you can see there, their Christology is weird to us, right? So Jesus was, had a pre-human existence he was created as the Archangel Michael. At the incarnation, Michael ceased to exist, Jesus begins to exist. When Jesus dies, that's when Jesus, as we know Jesus, ends. Post-resurrection, it's Michael reborn. So God created Jesus as the Archangel Michael. At the incarnation, Michael ceases to exist for a time, and then Jesus begins. And then there is Jesus' ministry. 
his memories of being Michael are downloaded, as it were, like a computer at his baptism. At present, he's not a human being, Jesus. So he be, why? Because he went back basically to being the Archangel Michael. So there is no human mediator in the JW system. The famous one is in Thessalonians, where it says at the parousia, at the second coming, he will have the voice of an archangel. They use that, they, they hold to the, actually to the view that Trinitarians hold to, that he pre-existed as the angel of the Lord. So all the appearances of the angel of the Lord are Jesus in his pre-human state. So what's the counter to that? In the missions ground, right? So if you are talking, by the way, missions is not just like we do, Peru, Germany, Europe, and etc. It's online. Online you're doing mission work. This is why it's called social media missions. That's your mission. You're doing mission work there. So you're gonna encounter this. So that's why I'm showing some, uh, some of that, those beliefs. And this is also useful for other Unitarians. So we have Deuteronomy 18, right? God would raise up a human being, not some angel slash human. Uh, Daniel 10, 13 is a key one because it calls one of, it talks about one of the archangels. So remember, uh, many archangels in the Bible. So if Jesus is the only begotten, right? The unique figure, why does Daniel 10, 13 say this Michael is one of the archangels. Hebrews is very powerful. Hebrews 1, especially. That chapter begins with the invisible, silent Son of God. And there's a memorization tool uh, called a mnemonic. Hebrews 1, 5. To which of the angels did God ever say? That should be the end of it. So I, I have 5-1. What's 5-1? It's about the high priest. A priest can only be chosen from among angels? No, a human being. So that's a, a good mnemonic there. Hebrews 1-5. 5-1. A real human anointed Davidic descendant. Angels are not anointed. By definition, someone who's anointed has to be a human being. How is an angel anointed? That's an impossibility. Something else about JWs, there's a thing called the governing body of the 12 apostles on earth, as they're called, and the 144,000 of Revelation. So only those two groups, right? The governing body and the 144 are really the only new covenant saints born again, the Israel of God. Christians, in other words. So they're the real Christians. So the people coming at your door, ask them this question. Next time you see them at your door, are you uh, a born again, not Christian, are you born again? Are you a saint? Or even more pertinent, are you in the new covenant? Because they're not in the new covenant. They're not born again Christian. Well, if they're honest, they'll say no. They're not, they're not uh, what's called spirit-filled. They don't have the spirit of God. Only the governing body and the 144. But Mormons are similar in that there's an, there's someone taps them on the back of the neck, Mormons. And I think JW's, Jehovah's Witness, it's just, I think, a feeling. That, that, but there's really no way to show anyone here one of the 144. There, there's no way. that. There's a heavenly calling and there's an earthly calling. Most of the JWs who come at your door, they're called the great crowd. But there's really no way to, sh I mean, if, how? This, as far as I know from the literature, there's no way. So if I come to a JW elder and say, you know, I, I got the heavenly calling. God, God has anointed me. I'm one, one of 144 or whatever. Yeah. I really don't know what the... They'll probably say, uh, no, go home, think about it more. They'll probably reject you. So the church has been split. So there are two hopes. If you're the earthly calling, if you're the part of the great crowd, you are expecting Armageddon, right? Armageddon, you will be saved. You will be spared, right? 
what we would call the great tribulation and so on. So you will be spared the wrath of God and you will get to live on a renewed earth, paradise on earth, really the king, as we know the kingdom of God on earth, that, that's how you survive. And you survive as a mortal. You, you'll get to live longer, but eventually you'll die at some point. You're not immortal as we understand. The only ones that are immortal are the governing body, uh, the 12 or the 144. But that's immortality for them. So the other thing is the worldwide sexual abuse. They deny that to my face, ask them about it, and hopefully they're honest. But it's based on this two witness rule. I don't know if you've heard, you've seen there are a zillion documentaries you can see on YouTube online about it. It's very sick. Basically, uh, if, if uh, you know someone who, who's abused by an elder, no less, in the hall, in the kingdom hall, they'll ask for two witnesses. Do you have two witnesses? So if I'm a, a, a young boy or a young girl, they'll ask, where's your two witnesses? Uh, so they don't have a mediator. The people at your door, they, they really don't have a mediator because there's no human Jesus, right? Remember, is this Michael reborn. And that's because the organization is the mediator. So the organization is called the mother. They're the only ones. So yeah, you're, you're going to have to talk, ask them all those questions. But wait a minute, I, I'm reading my Bible. Because they love, the tactic is, well, you know what the Bible says? They're good, right? They're biblicists. They consider themselves biblicists. So you be a biblicist back. And you go, well, you know, Hebrews 1.5, explain that to me. First uh, Timothy 2.5, explain that to me. Um, what covenant are you in? That's very important. Ask them that question at the door. Th this is important. Uh, many Unitarians, again, if you believe in a pre-human, as there is, it's called, Jesus. So you can be Unitarian. So you can have a right theology, let's call it, but a wrong Christology. You gotta have both. It's not either or. So literal, it's a thing called literal versus ideal pre-existence. <clears throat> So, again, Hebrews 1 is, is the passage to go here about this topic because that chapter begins with an invisible, silent Son of God, if you read those verses. When did God beget an angel son, right? They believe Jesus was an angel, the angel of the Lord, the mnemonic again. There's a thing called personification versus personality. So John 1 is the big one, right? In the beginning was the Word. And the word was with God, and the word was the son of God. That's how they read it. But again, the word of God is never a he or a him in the Old Testament, never. It, the word of God is God himself. It's like the word of Tracy is, is the word of Tracy someone else apart from Tracy? I hope not. This view, the literal pre-existence view, is not obviously compatible with the virgin birth. Because the virgin birth, according to Matthew, and there are the verses, talks about the origin of Jesus. That's how it begins. Matthew 1.1 1, 1 and 1.18. This is the origin. This is an account of the origin of Jesus. That's what it says, literally, the Greek. The word there is genesis. Unfortunately, many translations hide that. It says the book of genealogy or the birth of Jesus was like this. It's not quite right. You're talking about the origin of someone. And then uh, coming into existence, Matthew 120, what is begotten. Begotten, by the way, is an antiquated word. It's an old English word. I prefer procreated. That's what begetting means. Procreation. You know the word there, create, creation. So if you're created, how did you pre-exist? As Anthony says, how do you pre-exist yourself? How do you exist before you were born? It's a good question. So this is very important, why? I'll give you a couple of reasons. Royal legitimacy. Is he really the Messiah, the Son of God? Jesus. He's the human prophet, Deuteronomy 18, very important. He's the true Son of Man. Jesus' favorite self-designation is the famous Son of Man, used 80 times, 8-0, in the Gospels alone. Jesus uses that title for himself 
uh, most of the time. Why? Because it simply means he's the human being. Daniel 7, John 4, he's the true human atonement. How can an angel atone for your sins? Remember we talked about how do you anoint an angel? Well, how does an angel atone for your sins? Hebrews 9 and Romans 3. And again, this is the whole enchilada. New Covenant Christianity is based on all this. That's why the people at your door, the JWs, they're, they're not in a covenant. They're not in any covenant, really. Ask them that. So, feedback. This is from a JW. Uh, just the fact that you have to suffer loss of all social and familial connections should be a red flag concerning staying in the watchtower in the organization. Most witnesses live double lives, suffer in silence. Fear will always dominate this organization and only those with strong reasoning characteristics will survive it. So this is what I call the good. So we'll go through the good, the bad, and the ugly. <laughs> it's only fair. Another one from uh, JW, thank you for another great video. I faded some months ago and trying to find my way. <clears throat> Again, these are the people that you might do what I showed you, like reply to them, say, hey, get back to us and so on. I have to say ever since watching your videos, I've pretty much come to the conclusion that Jesus is not the most high God. That's great. I thank you, Sir Anthony, for your kind invitation. I'm one of those inactive JWs. It seems that we have much in common with our beliefs. I have seen some of your videos and like what I see. What I like is your manner and the fine way in which you present particular issues. You, my friend, have prompted me to start using my Facebook account. I love this. More clearly and pointedly to spread the message and also to clarify who God and his Messiah are. And this is Terry Robinson. We know this gentleman. That's great. That's what I want to hear. Like, I want to get out there, right? Few are, uh, uh, what's a famous saying? Few are the workers. I absolutely love this channel, the YouTube channel. While I do not agree with you 100%, which is fine by us, right? We're working towards unity in all things. I appreciate how I'm able to pause and do my own Bible research and just think about these interesting topics. The Bible is so full of beautiful things to ponder. This is the great thing about YouTube. You show a video and people can pause it, right? They can, <clears throat> I don't know about you guys, but whatever I read or watch, um, I usually stop every like couple of seconds because there's, there's something I hear, I gotta research, is this correct? Is this right? Did that person say this? What's the context of that quote or that Bible verse? Is, is this right? I always do that, so it takes me a while to uh, read stuff. <laughs> Just found your channel, subscribe. Subscription uh, is important. Uh, I don't know if you saw in the YouTube, but subscribers are important. So tell people to subscribe to your channel. What that means is they click on it, and whenever you post something, a new video, they get a uh, notice, a message. So-and-so posted a video. I have not been to a JW meeting since being guilted into going to a memorial. That, that's the communion service. It's called a memorial. Where it's not really a, anything. They pass the cup, they pass the bread, they don't take it. About three years ago, I was disfellowshipped three times by the age of 26 and found Jesus by the time I was 42. That was 14 years ago. Now I still have some anger issues towards the organization, Watchtower Society, if you're a Star Trek fan, but I'm working on it. Yes, the rank and file need to not feel attacked, but loved on. They need us to help them be set free. Thank you. Not the bad. This man's God is a figment of his desire. <laughs> The kingdom has come. I think you're looking for the wrong indicators. <laughs> the ugly, please kindly escort Buzzword back to his asylum quarters. Much thanks. Keep spreading your hate. It's people like you that keep evil alive. I'm telling you, if they could, 
they would burn us alive. Some people have hate and violence in their heart. May God be merciful. Uh, Sarah's going to share some others while she gets up here. So focusonthekingdom.org is our main uh, website. Focus on the King you can read the Focus on the Kingdom magazine there for free. Everything's free. Thehumanjesus.org, this is other website, and ChristEnemyLove.com. Just a quick um, disclaimer about this image. We do not obviously propagate the Catholic uh, feminine Jesus there, but this is just a play on that imagery, that iconography that goes with this website. And I hope you can visit this website because if we do not have love, we have nothing. First Corinthians 13, right? Love does not rejoice with error, error or evil. So what I just talked about for two hours is for nothing if I don't love my enemy. True? I could teach you all the great things, Paul says. I could, you know, teach you wondrous things about this and that. But if we don't have love for enemy, we got nothing. So please visit this website. This is obviously just a, a play on this image of the Catholic uh, influence Christ. You see them with the sword, and the sword is bloody for a reason. There's a lot of blood that has been shed by so-called Christians. That's not how we love our, our enemy, by the way. You do not love by killing, let alone, let alone harming your fellow human being. And this person says, hello from Slovakia. I'm glad that I can watch your videos in which you preach the gospel about the kingdom of God and about biblical truth. I found you a few months ago. I was looking for non-Trinitarian biblical Christian churches or movements. I was raised as a Catholic believer. Now I'm 18 and the biblical truths have changed my mind and my beliefs. I thank you for your ministry and your fire for the gospel. God bless you all from Canada. He says, I am a Persian Canadian. It has taken me 22 years to find out that these Trinity Bibles are not teaching the right stuff. The 22 years is a long time for research like this and looks like so much time has been wasted, but God's Spirit finally directed me to find out I was not alone. I now have this calling that I should help other Persians to know about the truth of Jesus. I feel so bad that these people who have the clean heart to see the difference are easily trapped in the confusion of the Trinity. I'm a pastor of a small Christian assembly. Way back in the 80s, I pastored a Reformed Baptist church that adopted the 1689 Baptist Confession of Faith, and I was at that time a staunch defender of Trinitarianism and its creeds. It was only about three years ago that I began to see, by God's grace, how the traditional man-formulated Trinitarian creeds conflict with the direct, divinely inspired statements that are found in the sacred scriptures. For instance, Christ in his prayer to the Father said in John 17, this is life eternal that I might know thee, not us, nor you and I and the Holy Spirit, as the only true God. Thank you so much for your ministry of sharing the knowledge that God has gifted you with, which will, under God, help many be freed from the chains of human tradition to know the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. It's amazing English from the Philippines. I was a JW, and for me the chains really started to drop off when I realized for the first time who Jesus was, the fully human, non-preexistent Son of God. Once I started to see Jesus for who he really was, I realized that I had been misled. For the first time, I saw the organization in a new light. They claimed to be feeding people spiritually and leading people to Jehovah, but now I saw them as inserting themselves between Jesus and his sheep and actively working to hinder a closer relationship with him. The linchpin in this deception to me is the teaching of the two classes of Christians. Once I realized I had been misled on the teaching of the two classes, I can't imagine a teaching with graver consequences. For over 30 years, I never questioned it, I started to think about how I could have been misled so easily for so long. Now it seems like the scandals in the JWs just keep coming and the growth is really slowing down. There are new XJW YouTube channels every week it seems so I know people are streaming out. 
Let's try to light the way to Messiah for as many as possible and help them to not end up in the agnostic or atheist camp, which seems to be quite common. Lord, where are we to turn to? You have the sayings of everlasting life. John 6, 68. So this is the magazine some of you might get. Again, if you want a hard copy of this, contact us. Carlos at thehumanjesus.org or Anthony Buzzard at mine spring.com anthony buzzard one word at mindspring.com and uh yes this goes out 2000 a month and this is how it happens you know people contact us and uh, we go and they form their little group sometimes like in germany uh, almost 10 years ago in peru i'll just quickly tell you about pastor edwin maurizio he was a uh, Pentecostal pastor of a very uh, ultra Pentecostal system in Spanish, this is Peru. And he was high up in this organization of almost a million people around the world. And he was like the governing body, you know, he was like one of the 12 apostles. And one day he was being flown. He was, uh, this man was living in luxury, making, I believe, if I could say $2,000 a month, US in Peru, that's incredible money. And he was being flown everywhere, you know, to open churches and so on. And in one of his flights, he read one of our translated magazines in the, in the airplane. And he already had a thought about the sleep of the dead and the so-called immortal soul doctrine. And what he read from Anthony sort of verified it. You see what I'm saying about you put the seed and maybe someone has already uh, thought about that? And then he contacted us once again. How does this happen? He emailed us through Anthony uh, Facebook and then Anthony, sorry, uh, Focus, and then Anthony uh, sends it to me, Spanish speaker. And then I started communicating and so on. And now he's out, thank God. It took him a couple of years to plan his exodus. And now he's got 10 pastors in Peru, 300 people and growing, thank God, many churches. He's expanding to Chile. And we're going back in July to do, a, now he's got a yearly conference, uh, copying a lot of us that do it ar around the world. Germany is another group. Actually, the German conference is happening as we speak, right? So there's a group there of, I don't know, 100 people, maybe more, and they do their best and so on. So this is how it happens, we, and we all have to uh, uh, keep working at this.